I've been using iOS 18 ever since it came out earlier this week. And I have a list of features that I think are some of the best features and some of my favorite features in iOS 18 so far. These features will be ranked in no particular order, but I do want to highlight these features because I think these are going to be the features that you would want to try out first. This first feature is actually locking apps behind Face ID. Now, I know Android's had this for a very long time. Having apps locked behind uh, biometrics is actually a beneficial thing Despite all of the social media posts claiming that this is a cheater's paradise. Let's face it, if you're going to cheat, you're going to cheat. It doesn't matter what version of iOS or Android you are using. But with this particular feature, this actually helps you keep a lot more information secure. For example, there are several apps that maybe you don't want everyone to have access to in the event that your friend is borrowing your phone. You can lock these apps behind Face ID and whenever your friend or whoever is using your phone at the time decides to open that app, then they would have to authenticate with Face ID. With iOS 18, you'll be able to customize your icons. You can customize it based on the color of the wallpaper, or you can customize it based on if your phone is using light or dark mode. I'm going to change how you use it, to be honest, but it's nice to have a set of new icons and it kind of makes your phone feel new again. The calendars app in iOS 18 has gotten a lot more useful. There is a slight redesign but one of the features I wanna highlight is having your reminders integrated within the calendar app. I know apps like Fantastical has had this feature for a very long time, but if you do not want to pay for an app to have that feature, then once iOS 18 is available to the public, you can have this feature enabled for free. This actually makes the calendar app a lot more useful because not only you'll be able to see your events for that particular day, but you'll be able to see all of your reminders as well. And it kind of removes the need for a reminders app from purely a utility perspective. The calendar app has gotten a little bit more useful with iOS 18. These next two features highlight some of the home screen improvements Apple has been working on for the past couple of iOS releases. The first feature I want to highlight in terms of the home screen improvements is having the ability to place your app icons anywhere on the home screen. Again, this is another thing that's existed on Android for a very long time. But the reason why I find this useful is because it kind of eliminates the need for widgets for me. The reason why I have a widget on my iPhone 15 Pro, which is running iOS 17, is because my hands are small and I don't want to have to use reachability in order to access the apps at the top of the screen. With this particular feature, I can just have all of my most used apps lower so that I can actually operate my iPhone with just one hand. iOS 18 introduces a new way to actually resize your widgets within the home screen without having you to go into the widgets menu and selecting a different size. I really hope Apple keeps this feature throughout all of the iOS 18 beta cycle because for those who use widgets, this is going to be very useful, especially as you are redesigning your home screen for the previous listed feature. Control Center also got a huge redesign. It's actually a lot more easier to use in my opinion, and it breaks down your control center between your network connections, your home connections if you use Apple Home or any smart devices, your music, and you can also add additional controls to your control center. Not only that, but you can actually resize some of the controls in control center in order to suit your needs. iOS 18 also introduces a password app, and this is useful 
if you are uncomfortable with leaving your passwords with a third party. With this app, you'll be able to see a categorization of all of your passwords, including Wi-Fi passwords, which I find very useful. And it's actually sorted automatically. It also integrates having the additional second factor. For those of you who may not know what I'm talking about, is basically that six digit code that you would have to enter on several different websites. You can use the password app in order to grab that particular code and use it to authenticate. This last feature I want to go over is the redesign settings app. I don't believe that this app is going to remain the same between beta one and the final version of iOS 18, but I do like where Apple is going. The settings app has actually categorized the privacy screen into something that's a bit easier to digest. Now you, in all of the categories such as your camera, your local network connection, microphone, you'll be able to see how many apps have access to that particular feature that your phone has. And from there, you can just actually go in and just do a quick audit. In addition for the iCloud Plus, users. The settings page also makes it a, a lot easier to digest. Instead of just having different roles for different sections of iCloud Plus, there are several condensed sections that go over how many photos that you have saved to iCloud, how much megabytes or the size of your mailbox, your messages, etc. I find this very useful and it's very easy to digest all of that information. What iOS 18 features are your favorite? Which are you planning on using if you decide to update to the beta or decide to wait until the final release? Let me know in the comments. Thank you all for watching. It really helps me determine what type of content the channel should focus on. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Take care.